people think that like, you know, oh, you know, the, the, the common myths of if I change, if I change it 10% or if I do those kind of things that it's okay. And, and it's not. And welcome back to the Riley Black Project. Crystal and John. That- oh, I don't know. Maybe <laughs> this. Ta-da. This is our new backdrop. What do you think? I like I'm it. I'm trying to like move my... <laughs> what are you trying to do? I don't know. So this this took a lot. This took a lot of designing on right. our living room floor. Yeah. With mapping out where they should go. Right. We had two colors at first. Right. We had um the black and then mm-hmm. a gray. And I I couldn't I couldn't incorporate the two. Right. I had to go all black. Well, and then we wanted to incorporate the lighting. Right. The and LED then we couldn't lighting, figure out like how. where it should go. Right. I wanted it to kind of look like, you know, that the light was kind of coming through like the crack. Mm-hmm. And I I hope we've accomplish that we got two cracks (laughs) yeah yeah i like it Mm -hmm. and then i mean it's hard because our last backdrop was our last studio was amazing right so like following that up was Mm -hmm. really difficult well and and also that pattern that we had a lot of people have been using it right because it is because it is is awesome awesome. and it was like our plan b i think we mentioned it on the last right um episode yeah, we'll that, like if this back. didn't work we're just we'll just go back to what we had because right. it was awesome mm-hmm. um but yeah i've like seen it everywhere right. lately you know right. on tv and other studios mm-hmm. and stuff and i'm like it is awesome and it right doesn't like that doesn't take away but i also want it to be a little bit unique mm-hmm. so i found these yeah. um and yeah they just look really cool i wish they were yeah. like they had other sizes because i would have liked to do like probably a little smaller right um but yeah and then on this side if you can see i don't know where to move my head what are you trying to show the glitter the glitter yeah so we have a new glitter wall if you knew anything about my office office at the old house i had a full silver like glitter wall so i ordered i found black glitter Mm -hmm. wallpaper and put that up over there and i kind of want to put it like everywhere so i'm trying not to (laughs) um and then the shoulder cut. Yeah, right there. This is where you. all my my things are. Yeah, that's where they were in um, the last studio. Yeah, and they were on a shelf instead of yeah. this bookshelf. Yeah. But um eventually when we get more cameras, yes, then you'll get a better view of the stuff that's gonna be behind me. Right, and right, then right. there's also stuff we're we'll gonna have... add for the sides that don't really matter now that we're just using right. one camera. Right. We'll so. have uh um cut shots. The cutaways will look better. Yeah. Because they'll be more directly on right and yeah. especially when we have guests and, and yeah. live in-person guests it'll right. look better yeah instead of yeah. just from the side basically. right then then from this yeah. view just zoomed in yeah so tell us what you think there might be some little Only tweaks if you like it. here and there that's true if Only it really if like sucks it. if you don't like it don't i tell don't us really want to know <laughs> <laughs> this is true. Remember that clip of um, I'm not in the constructive criticism phase of my right. life. Yeah. <laughs> Only tell me if it's good. Uh, I'm kidding, but kind of not. Right, right. I mean, it, um, it does. It does take a lot of, um, you know, you you have an idea of what you want in your head, right. and then and this isn't and then, exactly it. So I'm trying to like let that go. Going to Amazon and finding right the pieces that translate what's in your head exactly onto... which is always a difficult right. thing for me because right. my brain says one thing and then i always have to work backwards mm-hmm. on how to make what my brain drummed up right. like reality mm-hmm. but then it's not like there's no printer right. i can't draw very well right and so like trying to like mm-hmm. <laughs> you know yeah, yeah for sure yeah <laughs> and i was of... i was thinking of um Putting, just putting a monitor and mm. putting the logo on there mm-hmm. but then the glare of the lights mm. on the monitor and right. stuff, i didn't even like bring it up to you yeah so like it's gonna be hard to light and all this yeah and that, so well and then um, does it do the little like what's that what? when, like when no, you fill the anymore. monitor not no? anymore okay. not these days i could fix the shutter speed to mm, match and it won't right, do that. okay yeah that that's a like an old, old thing yeah yeah an older thing. <laughs> yeah you can you can fix that a lot mm. better now um, okay but i mean eventually i think maybe a neon sign would be cool yeah you know, Definitely. with the different colors. Yeah. But so um, we just wanted to do that real. Now. Yeah. This is 2.0. Right. We just wanted to reveal that really quick before yep. we bring on our guest because, yeah. you know, we don't want like 
make them sit there and be like, wait, we're yeah, going to exactly. talk about things exactly. while you awkwardly yeah. wait for us to introduce you. So, so this is the new set. Um, yeah. Finished for mm -hmm. now. For now. <laughs> <laughs> Stay tuned. Yeah. Um, and uh, we'll go get our guest. Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, it's going to be a good one. Yeah. Okay. BRB. Attention all laser owners and crafters. Are you tired of spending hours cutting, painting, and assembling laser products? Look no further than Crazy Laser Dad Laser Ready Blanks. Their high quality blanks are expertly sourced, <laughs> tested, and ready to use with your lasers. Say goodbye to the hassle and frustration of time consuming projects and hello to more time creating and selling. Plus, with their wide selection of items, you'll surely find the perfect blank for all your customers. So, what are you waiting for? Visit crazylaserdad.com today and take your laser crafting to the next level with their laser ready blanks. Welcome to the revolution in laser engraving. Introducing Lens Digital, the creators of the game changing Pyburn rotary attachment. With the Pyburn 4.0, you can turn ordinary cups, tumblers, glasses, and more into extraordinary masterpieces. Looking to engrave niche items or want the functionality of a Chuck rotary? Look no further than the Pyburn Grip, Lens Digital's Chuck-style rotary. With a range of different sized jaws, you can easily engrave a wide variety of items. All Lens Digital products are compatible with most CO2 and Galvo lasers and were designed specifically for the laser industry. All that, paired with the best-in-class customer support, Lens Digital is your one-stop shop for all of your rotary needs. Transform your laser engraving game with Lens Digital, where makers succeed. Unleash your creativity today. And don't forget, we are proud Lens Digital affiliates as well. If you're shopping, code Riley Black will take $50 off any order of $600 or more. And we're back, and we're here with our guest, Ken, of Trademark Watchdogs. How's it going, Ken? Hey. Doing really good. <laughs> so um i needed to have you on. so i've been a group member i don't know probably for a couple years now i think mm. um and i was thinking about it recently and then one of our members suggested it so i was like let me let me just get on this instead of thinking about it mm -hmm. let me do it um but his his group is a great resource for any community that basically makes things right. um because if you have a business where you, you know, make stuff, you're always going to have a customer right. who comes to you and wants something. Right. Disney that's oriented, trademarked, yes. whatever. Um, yeah. And that's just one of many reasons why his group is a good resource because it it serves a couple purposes. So we'll get into that. But okay. so can tell us a little bit about your background, like how, why did you start the group? You know, what do you do? That kind of stuff. What a weird trail that's been. <laughs> <laughs> right? It uh, my, <laughs> my background actually goes, uh, I, I'm actually from Alberta. Uh, it goes into a background of has waste in the oil and gas sector. Mm -hmm. So managed there for a number of years, about a decade. And uh, in 04, took a change of, uh, of course mm -hmm. and ended up in Las Vegas buying a sign company. Nice. So I've been here for almost 20 years now. So yeah. it almost feels more like home than Alberta anymore, but, <laughs> right. um, you know, I, I learned a lot. I learned, um, everything dealing with the sign industry, dealing with customers, not so much, uh, trademarks and things like that. But, um, I, as, as I got into the sign business, um, I started toying around with some of the early print on demand, mm -hmm. uh, kind of at night as a bit of a hobby, throwing some shirts up, making a few dollars on places like Teespring. Right. Uh, so really early oh, adopters and uh, Teespring. Yeah, is it still oh, a thing? I, I wouldn't call it a thing. No. <laughs> yeah, I remember I think, when it was so popular, like when it first kind of came out. I, yeah. I haven't heard that that word in a while. <laughs> that company, I guess. Yeah, they were they were the big driver. I mean, I think going back, we're probably saying 2013, 14. You know, and the whole Facebook ad thing and people slinging T-shirts. And, of course, Teespring's changed dramatically since then. But the whole print-on-demand industry was developing with this concept where you could put your design up, somebody else would print it, ship it. And and right. then in uh, 2015, Merch by Amazon came along. And I got in right at the beginning of Merch by Amazon. And within nice. about, I'd say, a year, I was you know, saying I'm, I'm not on the street anymore. I'm, I'm doing this full time, uh, yeah. was making a, a pretty good income. Great. Um, but of course 
what you learned once you got into the print on demand industry is how scrupulous people can be and how vicious they can be. Mm -hmm. And you start running into this whole trademark scenario and I'm not going to name names of companies, but there were some pretty early adopters of trademark bullies that started to figure out that, Hey, if I Mm. trademark a phrase, I can go to these different platforms and they're not going to question me the validity as right. long as I have a registration number, they're just going to take it down, you yeah. know, regardless of how trademark actually functions. And uh, that's that's where the group started, you know, early 2018 yeah. was a, a accumulation of events of uh, trademarks and trademark bullies and putting yeah. your foot down and getting angry one night. So, right. Speaking of all things laser, check out Houston Acrylic at HoustonAcrylic.com for reliable laser tested and laser approved materials. Made for makers by makers, Houston Acrylic features over 450 styles of acrylic sheets. With over 50 new arrivals being released this month, Houston Acrylic is committed to bringing new and innovative styles to the laser community. My personal favorite is the matte anything matte, <laughs> and I feel it's perfect for everything. Don't forget to save 10% by using our exclusive coupon code TRBP10 at checkout. Get inspired today and visit HoustonAcrylic.com. Do it. As far as like the trademark and the copyright and like the companies who get these reports and then have to take them down. So, you know, I've heard that like Etsy and Amazon, so they can't take it down until it's reported by the owner. And then once it's reported by the owner, I don't know that they can look into the validity of it because... It, basically, if they get involved too much, then now all of a sudden they have some risk themselves in if they get involved. Do you know anything? About- oh, no, they, they've, they've got risk all the way along. And, and companies like Redbubble have shown that by being sued by other companies. Mm. Um, Sunfrog was a, a big, big one in the news uh, about being sued. They uh-huh. got sued, uh, if I remember, by Harley Davidson. Mm, yeah, and Harley Davidson. They're they. What do you call it? They're just they're one that's very active in in shutting down anyone who you know. Touches well, they them. are, but but you look at somebody like Harley Davidson. They're active because they're protecting their brand, right? Right. Right. Um, but going back on that, I wouldn't say that they have no ability to take people down. Like I think you said, stay at the beginning, people like Etsy or Amazon, they have to wait until they get a complaint. No, that's not true. I, I mean, Merch by Amazon is a great example. From what I've heard. <laughs> yeah, but Merch by Amazon is a great example of, you know what, if something crosses the line, they'll, they'll, they'll take it down. I mean, and they're, they're almost over the line protective of Mm -hmm. trademark because they'll start feeding it into their, you know, catalog system and won't allow you to put it up, even though the trademark is quite frivolous, they just won't mess with it. Etsy on the other hand, um, yeah, they, they tend not to act unless somebody submits something, which is sad because they're as much of a thief as uh, any one of these, you know, because they're uh, profiting off of these, yeah, these people that are, I mean, Every time it's usually a new person to the community, either when it was shirts or lasers, they would say, oh, well, and it happened to me as well. When I was new, I didn't understand, you know, how it was everywhere, but that it wasn't allowed. And it was like, well, I see them everywhere. You know, what's what's the issue with it? And then once you're told the issue, it's kind of like, oh, duh, like I, I should know that I should know better. But um you just don't think that far into it. I think initially, I don't know, but Mm -hmm. you know, when a new person comes into the industry and they see 7,000 million Disney things, and then people, you know, misinformation saying, Oh, if I say it's inspired, if it's, you know, all of these things, Oh, if I, if I just don't mention their name, then it's not infringing or, you know, all those things. (laughs) There's just so much misinformation and there's so many of them. You can shut down 20,000 of them and 20,000 will be back up the next day. And so it's a difficult fight for, for the owners and, you know, just it's, it has to be like talked about more in order for people to understand um you know like we had one in um 
the that mom with the laser group that I helped run. And it was a, a Grinch one. It was like a Grinch ornaments with the Grinch hand. Mm-hmm. And she <laughs> shook it off and she was so proud of her work, which mind you, it did look good. Right. But um, you could tell that like she was like, oh, is anybody else selling these? How are they doing? What's the price? She I at least hope that she didn't know better. Right. And like, you know, the other mods were kind of like, oh, no, you know, like more stern. And I'm, I I was a little bit more gentle in my like removal or decline mm-hmm. of the post and was just, you know, like, hey, this is this is trademark right. copyright protected. We don't allow that in the group. You know, make sure you look into that and evaluate your risk before right. selling these with your business, giving her the benefit of the doubt that maybe she just doesn't know better. Right. Um, because with the Grinch, I think Liz talked about it on our podcast. Do you remember? Um, but initially, so she did. Oh, yes. She, yes. she made a mug and mm-hmm. I think it was a Grinch mug. mug. Right. She didn't even sell any. Right. And she listed it on Etsy and she got sued. And I mm-hmm. think she settled for like $1,500. And then she kind of joked with, um, I think the other attorney or whatever and was like, can I, can I keep this mug? You know, I I paid basically $1,500 for it. And he was like, sure, you can, you can keep the mug, but you know, she learned the hard way. And a lot of people think that like, Oh, you're just going to get a cease and desist. Right. right, That isn't always the case. Sometimes you're lucky and you get that warning. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you're not. And they just go straight to suing you. Yeah. Um, Yeah. So yeah, but anyway, yeah, let's talk about the frivolous side of it. Cause that's a little bit different. Cause you know, the, the group covers kind of like all topic topics I've seen, but it was started to kind of prevent the bullies who are really just trying to shut down competition and mm-hmm. like, you know, get that market and they're trademarking things that shouldn't be trademarked. Yeah. And see, that goes back to, um, I, I, I guess let's put this all in one big sphere or envelope when we're talking about say t-shirts or coffee mugs or your laser stuff. I mean, all of this, I guess you you just say is merchandise, right? Right. Right. They're merchandise with design. So if we look at it in that sense, you're producing something or having something produced and selling it. And of course, phrases and things like that are the popular things. Now there's two sides to trademark that I see in our merchandise. There's the big brand stuff. Like you just finished talking about the Disney's and the Grinches and the, Harley Davidson's and all this fun stuff that, you know, all the sports teams, everything in that regard is covered by licensing. If you want to legally do something with those products, you're going to have to get a license from those companies. Right. And that, 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 I mean, we won't get into things like parody or fair use because you'll get a thousand people commenting and 999 of them will be wrong. Right. Unless you actually speak to an attorney for how it works. But let's get to the phrases. And uh, the one that kind of kicked the group off would have been Mama Bear. Uh, and Mama yes. Bear, um, how how old do you think the phrase Mama Bear goes back? I mean, I, I mean, yeah, forever almost. <laughs> Goldilocks and the Three Bears, right? There's a Mama Bear, you know. Came to mind. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody were to say mama bear walk into a golf store and there's a, a, a coffee mug on the wall that says mama bear, I'm a golfer. Um, right. Would you be able to identify who the, that, that brand is? No, no. And because it is just so commonplace. Right? right. So what we had had is uh, I had a mama bear shirt up that, that sold quite well mm-hmm. going way back. One of the early, the early designs and, uh, one day I start learning about trademarks because we're learning that Merch by Amazon will take stuff down if a trademark is registered and somebody says something. So I look at Mama Bear and realize that there's a lady trying to trademark Mama Bear and she's getting pretty close. I mean, she's getting the point of her registration going into publication for opposition. Right. And um, so we started putting together, a, we, we learned that a letter of protest could be filed for free right. Which to a give lot of evidence people. against these. LOP. I see the yes, word LOP. <laughs> LOP. So uh, after that, this thought, let's talk about the process of, of a okay. trade. But go ahead. And and from now on we'll call it an LOP. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, we put our heads together on it and you know the group came together because one night I read about the letter of protest and LOP. 
mm-hmm. as a free free method to be able to submit evidence and and get some of these applications you know contested right and so i started a group and i think the first night i started the group we had seven or eight hundred members like yeah like this is a problem yeah and originally the group was completely focused on letters of protest like that that was the the case right and um we'll go into why the group changed a little bit after that but the focus was to file these letters of protest and mama bear was the first big example and the yeah. lady that was trying to go after this, she did not trademark her own company name. She didn't care to trademark any of that other stuff, in my opinion. Right. She wanted Mama Bear because she was going to take everybody else down in every marketplace she could. Right. And uh, after Dave Katoff, our, one of our other admins that helped found the group, he filed a 75-page letter of protest on the final day of publication for opposition. Wow. I mean, it was the last day you could do it and you had to file a big form L- LOP yeah. and um, that actually was reviewed and taken into account and yanked right back out of opposition, out of publication, wow. back to the director and thrown back to the examiner. And they did re-examine it and did come up with the reasons to say, no, this should not be allowed. And further to that, over the next couple of years, um, the lady, she fought it all the way to the TTAP to getting a final decision, and it's been thrown out. And it actually now is used as an example for other people that try to file for Mama Bear as to why they cannot have that that general term. So that's the culmination of how the group started to come together. Um, from that, we then, you know, started to make lists of what are the phrases that are harming people. Let's mm-hmm. get people putting in letters of protest. And it worked quite well. I mean, we even had competitions like who can file the most this month and, right. <laughs> you know, win an iPad and things like that. Well, then, yeah. you know, we didn't make a lot of friends with the USPTO. I, I'll right. say that right now. They, they may say otherwise, but they don't like our group. They don't like what we do. We've right. gotten the attitude of you guys aren't attorneys, so, you know, stay in your place. You'd and think, further though, to they would want they wouldn't want frivolous trademarks either, or do they because it's a money thing? I mean, obviously it's hard to say what their intentions are, but you know, it's hearsay, <laughs> <laughs> but like, you know, I, I guess I'm, I'm surprised that they wouldn't like that because you'd, you'd think you'd want to keep that integrity. You know, well, it's, it, we were doing work for them. Right. We're, we're going out and finding the evidence for them Right. And this is free. This is stuff that, in our opinion, you should have found before. Right. You, but that's, I, I do understand. I mean, that's not the process that the USPTO uses. I mean, they have a, a guideline for how they search things and how they do things. And, and they're not necessarily out there on Google like we are searching out phrases and finding who's trying to be frivolous with all these things. I yeah. don't think it's a money thing. Uh Um, but it's, it's an excuse to say, why do we have to do extra work? Because the letter of protest is not used a lot. And then we found that we could use it. And all of a sudden we take uh, on 600,000 trademark applications in a year. I think the total was, I don't know, six or 7,000 letters of protest. I I mean, it's minuscule really to how many are filed. And when yeah. a group comes in and doubles that number for them, um, all of a sudden they're like, their administrators are, wow, we got to do all this work to look through oh, these. Well, right, no. Right. Yeah. So they tried to impl- implement a fee. And I think the first fee they wanted was $250. And we opposed that. And when they finally pushed it through, they made it $50. Okay. Which, in my opinion, the only reason a fee was there was to try and knock our group down from submitting these. Yeah. And, and they've got, and even recently um, they've tried to revise that and they want to, I don't know what they want now. Um, I want to say 200 or 250 again, and we're opposing it again. I, I mean, it should be free as right. far as I'm concerned, but. Well, and especially if, if you're one, you're fighting something frivolous that could hurt your business again, because it's something that's a bestseller is a common phrase. You know, many people are selling it, right. but then there's the other side of it too, where, you know, what if, you know, they're like, I guess, infringing on yours or the other thing of like, they're doing something that's too close to yours or mm. they're, you know, they don't have first use because the trademarks work based on first use in the U S right. Uh, yes. And I mean, you have to prove 
A lot of things if you've got opposition or people that are fighting. But yes, first use will have the first crack of the cat. Okay. And so what is the process? I mean, I've filed for a couple. I have two trademarks myself, um, but I did them through LegalZoom and I wouldn't necessarily recommend <laughs> that to no. other people. One, because of the expense and they almost... I mean, th so the one of the first times I reached out to you, I had already been a member of the group, but um, I ran into an issue where they did something incorrectly on my filing. And then um, when USPTO came back and needed some clarification, because I had basically hired legers, LegalZoom, you know, and or an attorney to help file it, I couldn't answer the um question from the the trademark office the attorney had to but then the attorney yeah, that's fine well but then the attorney refused to give me additional information without charging me almost a hundred dollars for it okay. and the research i did told me that they messed up right and that it should have been found in the initial workings of my file Finally. and my trademark and it shouldn't have been done in the first place so basically to explain what happened my my company name is riley black and riley is my son's middle no. name and so they ask you when you're filing is this someone's name and well the answer mm -hmm. is yes but it's his middle name it's not his full name it's not john riley black because his name right. is john riley um and the research I said was like middle names like kind of don't count. If it's his first name and it's John and I'm naming right. it after him, I basically just have to disclose that. Um, but anyway, they and they had me when I filled out the form, it was either filled out incorrectly or it was confusing again because it was mm -hmm. his middle name. And so, you know, that's where the confusion came from. But they should have found that when I filled out the form, they right. should have told me this isn't filled out correctly or it doesn't need to be done for for a middle name and they wanted to charge me a hundred dollars just for them to explain that and then it was a more money for them to file the response on my right. behalf when i'm not allowed to, to file, file the response on my own because that's what i was just going to do i was going to be like well screw it never mind legal zoom i'll take over from here and that wasn't even an option the the trademark office wouldn't even talk to me because the legal zoom was involved. And right. so I had to like, I had, I, it took, I think four or five different phone calls to management in order for them to finally be like, okay, it's fine. Like we'll cover it. And then they sent me like a new form and whatever it eventually went through. Um, but it was a lot of extra money and it almost made it so that it, <laughs> like it didn't happen. It did right. <laughs> um, but so what's the process for someone who doesn't want to go through all of that <laughs> headache? Well, here, here's the thing. I, I, I mean, this gets off on a bit of a tangent about, you know, mm -hmm. filing for trademarks. Um, really, I would advise if you really don't know the system that you hire an attorney. And mm -hmm. I probably would not hire one of these online yeah. um, cattle gate type places like LegalZoom mm -hmm. to, to do it. Right. their whole prospect is just to sign you up and push you through. Right. Um, I, I would look at specific attorneys and, and we've got some good ones in group. There's yeah, um, three that. of them that have really helped us. Mm -hmm. Two of them that are ex USPTO examiners. Oh, nice. um, one quite recently. And she, she's a professor teaches law, but also does filings of trademarks for people. <laughs> Um, you know, so there's yeah. resources, but I would say find somebody that you can work with. It is going to cost you more to use an attorney, but a good right. one will get you through the minefields of doing that. And, and in our group, we have never, you know, told people we're against getting a trademark. We've right. always said, go out and get a trademark for your brand. Exactly. Or even if your brand has a catchy slogan or something that yeah. the, the consumer what... can relate to your company right. as being a trademark of you. Yeah, go for yeah. it. That's, that, that's yeah. So that, like that's is, few and far between, right? I mean, right. how many slogans does Nike really have trademark? That you know, they're right. not they're not a trademark bully that has 
I love my dog in the morning with a coffee under the rainbows. I, I mean, right. these are the kinds of the crazy yeah. things that are people are saying, Hey, I'll file this. And, and, and what they figured out, and this goes back to the history of the group was if I can file for this trademark and get it pushed through without people seeing it and get my registration, right? I can throw it at Etsy. I can throw it at um, Redbubble. I can throw it at Merch by Amazon. I can throw it at Amazon. Yeah. And they're not going to question it because right. they're not going to legally get into the process. They're yeah. just going to say, take it down. I don't want to deal with it. Yeah. Yeah. Now, well, when you go, uh, sorry, when you go back to the USPTO now with that, yeah, you'll say, why are you giving out these trademark phrases? And they're like, we follow the guidelines, which they did. And right. they do have processes to oppose those trademark registrations. The problem is, is they'll come to you and say, well, that's not how a trademark functions. Yeah. And it's not, it's not right. how the trademark functions and somebody should just get the phrase and then go to these marketplaces and say, Hey, ornamental use on the front of a shirt, take everything down. Right. In the real world, that's not how it's going to work. Right. But on the marketplaces, they've figured out, yes, that is how it'll work because right. now they have to fight me. And it gets even worse when you say get a company in China or Vietnam or India right. that now trademarks this and you can't, you can't physically really pull a court case with them. Right. And now, now add to the fact that we're dealing and this is why the group was formed. We're dealing with small business. Yeah. We're dealing with people that sold five mama bear shirts this month or two last month. And all of a sudden are being told, if you want to keep those shirts up, you're going to have to spend tens of thousands of dollars to go to federal court and try and fight this person. Right. And, and the average maker can't do that. No. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, and then that's the hard part too, with like Etsy. <coughs> I don't know if it's on the copyright side or the trademark side, because I know they're a little bit different. But like, so my my two trademark terms are Riley Black, my my brand, and then keychain thingies, which is uh, like an extension of my brand. It's what I call one of my particular um, like products, product lines. And mm -hmm. it's become like a thing in, in the industry. And and, you know, I kind of like so I started using it and I noticed other people were kind of like taking it because it just made sense because. You know, they're you know, no one ever knew what to call them, including me. And so that's why I literally called them keychain thingies. And then I saw that other companies were kind of doing that, too. And I was like, mm, no, I need to I need to protect this because this is this is mine. This is my right. baby. Um, and that's where, like, you know, they the purpose of them. But then with Etsy, it goes even if you have like a valid. I don't remember which one because, again, the processes are different. But even if you have a valid one, <coughs> the person who is violating that can counter it. And then you have if they counter it, you mm -hmm. basically have 10 days to bring a suit against them for mm -hmm. continuing to use it or whatever. Right. And after 10 days, if you basically don't show proof of of litigation, they can put it right back up. Hmm. And then two, I've to also two totally different things here, though. OK, this is something you have to understand is that's you're talking about copyright. OK, yeah. And Trademark and copyright are two totally different animals. Trademark. The problem is if they get that registration, they issue the takedown. There, There is no There's function no other than counter. Well, okay. There is hope, but you need to hire an attorney and go through the legal process and fight them. Right. Copyright, yeah. on the other hand, has the Digital Media Copyright Act, mm. which has a provision for a counterclaim. Okay. And that's the counterclaim you're talking about. And that's being abused. Right. In a perfect world, the counterclaim, you sign off that you legally you know, right. stipulate these things about, no, you know, I, that's not, it's not infringement, and I didn't copy. And you're supposed to sign that like an affidavit. And the problem is people don't care. They know that, well, most people don't have the money to put, take me to federal court. And who cares if I falsified the, the counterclaim or not. Right. right. Like, right. So sue me, but you do get the odd stupid person that gets a takedown from some company that is managing, say a far off Grinch product. And they look right. at the takedown and they say, Oh, well, what company is that that took me down and files a counter. And then, 
a, a week or two later, they get back an official legal document from the legal team that says we are suing you now. Right. Um, so you have to be very careful because, yeah. you know, that there's two games being played, a trademark game and a copyright game. Right. And both of them, Etsy just kind of washes their hands of it. Yeah. The other problem, though, is that what's coming up is these platforms are sometimes taking these these complaints that are filed against innocent people right. and terminating their account because they're like, yes. we don't want it. We don't want to deal with you anymore because we get these complaints right. and wash their hands of it. Well, and they're literally Going back to the point that Etsy is making money. Right. Uh, or, <laughs> Yeah. off of it regardless so it's it's really a weird wicked system that's going on and it's become yeah. very cutthroat and very yeah. ruthless so one of the ones um that was that recently did actually go to litigation was the oh what was her name the i don't i, I know i'm gonna say it wrong so i'll just say what it was but the but did you die with um oh. <laughs> the um the easter egg like shirts yeah. and stuff um yeah. because she was filing you know erroneous takedowns yeah. to i mean she she man she would go ham on <laughs> etsy and all these people would come to the group and they'd be like what is this like you know is this true is this whatever and then um, you know, again, like he said, a lot of people, they're small businesses, they maybe right. sell 10 of these shirts a month. And then when they get the takedown, they just take it down just to, it's not worth their time. A lot of right. times they're upset, you know, it sucks. That was a good seller, but I don't have, I can't take them to court. Right. So now I just have to be like, well, screw it and move on with on my day. Thing, right. right. Um, but someone actually did go after her and ended up filing filing suit against her do we know how that ended up oh yeah i mean i i got involved with that one yeah. that that's a case of somebody that got a uh, copyright registration on a design and then went to the marketplaces and said i own the phrase mm, which, which is not how it works which is 110 percent right. incorrect but they didn't care and they filed all kinds of copyright registration takedowns and just went crazy yeah. And it, for the second wave, I said, okay, I'm going to make up my own. I, I get into the monsters and the horror genre. So right. I made up a, but did you die with the zombie bunnies and their oh, eggs yeah. and <laughs> threw it up. And I copyright registered it for that though. Yeah. So the design had a registration. I put it up and I said, basically, you know, do it, try it, you know, come right. after it. Yeah. And sure enough, within X number of weeks, I got a takedown notice. And yeah. I think that was in a wide swath of takedowns. And I said, you know, do you really want to go here? And I countered. And the next thing you know, she had re reversed and asked Etsy to, you know, remove that takedown and all that. But she was already being sued by another another member, which did go through. They yeah. did settle. I don't know where it is now because the terms are undisclosed. But mm -hmm. I mean, as far as I know, the person that uh, that sued was happy with the result. And right. but I was ready to jump in the fray too because you've just taken down my copyright registered design claiming ownership of the phrase, which is right. wrong. Right. You would need a trademark for that. But but that gets into this. It's just a wicked mess of what's going on, and that one blew up because. She hit, I don't know, hundreds of people hundreds across of the, yeah. the, you know, just blanket takedown. So well, and I think there was even one that ended up, you know, because they Etsy started this new thing where if you were either a new shop or you got too many hits against you, whether mm -hmm. they were valid hits or not, they would instead of shutting down your shop completely, they would kind of hold your money and they would hold your money for like 90 mm -hmm. days. And so yeah, now they you're do a reserve. Yeah, they do a reserve. And so you're operating on like you're literally you're getting sales and you still have to keep putting them out. Right. But you're not getting paid for them for 90 days from right. I think even yeah. from like the day you delivered or something like that. And so, you know, it, it, even if a shop wasn't, you know, shut down completely, you're then still affecting like, right. you know, their their household and their business and of things that are frivolous or not valid or, mm -hmm. you know, is a stretch on what, you know, maybe you do have a valid one, but you're stretching out on whether this is infringing or right. not. And yeah, it just it's it's it affects people's livelihood. And and a lot of these people know better. I'm sure some don't. 
mm-hmm. and think that they're within their rights, but then the other ones know better and know just that, again, most people aren't going to come after you because it's really expensive. And a lot of us small businesses just don't have the means to do so. To do so yeah. yeah. And that, that seems to be the big disconnect if we go back to trademarks with the USPTO. The disconnect that they don't fully understand is you're dealing with small business that, you know, they'll say, well, you don't like the trademark, file your cancellation. You know, it's four or $500, file the cancellation, go through the process. Well, you, I mean, you're dealing with tens of thousands of small craft makers and some of these is like a, a four or $500 side gig to help put some food on the table. And right. you're telling them now, this whole process is broken, but go ahead and spend $10,000 and go through the process and fight this. And right. the bullies know that the bullies right. know that this is in place and they can abuse it. And that's right. all it is a complete abuse. Yeah. Uh, with what's going on. Yeah. Well, I mean, I appreciate your group because it really is, it's, it's an amazing resource for anyone who, who doesn't know, you know, a lot, I've seen a lot of new members come in because they just recently got a, a, a takedown and they don't know, you know, am I violating it? You know, am I not, mm-hmm. you know, how do I, you know, handle this if I am? And just, it's, it's great for showing people the right way to do it and then helping them if someone came to them, whether, you know, accurate or not. <laughs> so, yeah. I- and and the group has been interesting. You go back to the early, you know, the first three years of the group, it was all LOP focused. I mean, right. it was letter of protest and we didn't, we didn't entertain a lot of other discussion. And I've still got some hardliners in the group that right. are like, Ken, you know, stop accepting all these crazy posts that right. go up and let's get back to letters of protest. Well, letters of protest do cost $50 a piece now. It has affected us. They're trying to push it to 200. That will affect us even more. And we did see a need. We saw a lot of people, as you said, they don't even know what the difference between trademark and copyright is, let alone let's talk about a letter of protest. And so there's some very large topics that we have now allowed the group, as you can see, it's kind of, you could almost call it trademark copyright watchdogs, but (laughs) it's become a bit of a help center. And we we don't mind that because... If you want to learn, let's put the topics out there, no matter how simplistic they might be. Right. Let's get some attorneys that can offer some advice or some people that have been in the, the merch industries for years and really know the topics. Let's expand this. Now, that said, in the group, as you've probably seen, I, me, I don't put up a lot of a BS going on. I don't have, I spend, hundreds of hours with this group as do the other admins we don't have time for you to argue with us right on well disney's so big i can steal if i want to or right. mind your own business stay in your lane or you want to cause fights with i know better than you mm-hmm. we just have no time for it and we'll right. just remove you from the group but yeah let's let's have a topic of discussion that helps people that right. helps them understand what a copyright is, what a trademark is, and really understand what's going on in the industry and how to make contacts and have a support group. Yeah. Well, and so how many members do you have? I think it's up around 35,000 now. Yeah. I mean, so the, the that moment with the laser group is like 40 plus right now. And it can get really difficult to, I mean, so it's same with your group. All, all of the posts are reviewed you know, like they have to be admin approved. And then, you know, once you approve it, then like it's, you can't like approve every comment either, but at the same time, so being on top of, especially more so in your group than the, the other group that I help manage, you know, you have to, and you guys do a really good job at it, but, you know, monitoring those comments and making sure that like, if, and the, the members do a good job of it as well. If there's misinformation, they hop on that right away. Uh-huh. And they're like, do not tell people because I mean, t- people think that like, you know, Oh, you know, the, the, the common myths of if I change, if I change it 10% or if I do <laughs> those kind of things that it's okay. And, and it's not, and they're telling people this and, you know, with full confidence that, that this is okay. And they're basically kind of giving you legal advice when they have no rounds to do so. And so they, the group is really great about, you know, not allowing 
as much as they can the, for the misinformation. And if you do have the little asshats who come in and, you know, want to like be just rude about it or, you know, I'm going to I'm going to do Disney and, you know, right. I, I've been fine or I've been doing Disney for 10 years and they haven't come after me or whatever. Just getting those out of there because that all goes into you know, those newbies who come in that they mm -hmm. see all this and they have no idea that what they're doing right. is wrong, you know? Well, and they have no idea how much they could be sued by following some how of these people's advice. Right. You know? yeah. it, it's, it's been, it's been interesting. I mean, um, sometimes I've said I'm a bit of a field burner. I'll, I'll jump out in front and take the bumps and, but I'll burn the crop down and I just hope there's people <laughs> behind me planting new seeds, but yeah. I, we don't have a lot of time. Like I, I remember a post just a week or so ago, some lady came in with a rant and, and then, you know, people made some good comments and, and she said, well, thanks for playing. I said, yeah, thanks for playing too bad. I'm the game master. Goodbye. You know, it's just, we don't have time for it. And, yeah. and, and we don't have time for people that, that want to be jerks or think that they can come in and own the place. And, Right. And the other one is deleting comments. We, we say, yeah, deleting posts. We don't mind if you delete your reply or your comment, but right. do not delete. If you put up a post and we've approved it and people now are giving you advice and spending all that time and you don't right. like the answer because your store is full of Disney, right? do not delete the post without talking to us. And if you do, we're going to boot you from group. And it's just... Right. That's not bendable. That's, no, that, I mean, that's, that's the way it is. One. Honestly, I think your group is the first one that I saw that in. And I, I really liked it because, you know, especially when it comes to trademark and copyright, someone will ask a question and it's not something you can answer with like one sentence mm -hmm. for the most part, you know? So you have to give like all this kind of information and like explain why something is the way it is or how to go about it. And so you spend, you know, however many minutes, going into your response, you know, 10, 20 minutes maybe, and, then and you go to post it and the post is gone or you post it and then they dirty delete it an hour later because it wasn't going their way. And, you know, then right. all those people all wasted all that time. And it's not information that other people can see and learn from as well. Right. Like it, it isn't just for you. It's right. for everybody. It's kind of like I saw Liz post the other day about how she was getting all these, these messages um, about like help with settings and her private messages. Mm -hmm. And while helping someone in private messages, like we, we won't ever really like discourage it completely, but asking right. publicly, she can now help however Everybody. many people right. instead of just that one person in the private message. Cause nobody else is going to see it. Right. So yep. yeah, that, that was, I saw that first, I think in your group. And I, I loved that because I mean, it's, it's true. We've all or, had that frustration of that the post disappears and you're like, God damn it. <laughs> or someone who, who's like scared or timid to post mm -hmm. and to ask or reach out right. in DM, you know, they can get their right. answer, their questions answered. Yeah. Um, well, the other one in our group we don't have is the anonymous posting. Uh, uh, I'm, you know, you know, you can, you can private message one of us admins, but to be honest, if, if you've got that much to hide, I yeah. mean, I mean, people are going to figure things out. I mean, if you come in acting like the pariah, I mean, you better be careful because the first thing people will do is go look, look at up. your store or go look yep. at your content. And, and you know, I, even my stuff, like go after and look at my, I mean, right. mine is Monsters and Martians and some of the stuff will be kind of a bit of parody, but I do understand some parody, but I also know where I can push things and where I can't. And, right. and I don't care. I mean, so what everybody makes mistakes and if we find a mistake we fix it but right but but the whole focus of the group right now has 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 switched from not just letters of protest and i i do think we need to kind of push that a little more again because it's a great yeah. uh, tool to learn For sure, to it's a place where people can actually come and ask a question without saying you know ask a lawyer but ask your community how right. it's affected them or or yeah. how they've dealt with it and those kinds of things. And it's been a, yeah. a great resource for many people. And I mean, and, it was great for me when I had my issue with my trademark because they, they legit wouldn't help me. And I didn't know where to go yeah. you know, besides an attorney to get my answer. And I was just, what I felt was asking for a simple answer. And they're like, cool, pay for it. And I'm like, I, mm -hmm. I know I don't have to, but I also didn't know, you know, where else to go. So, I mean, it helped me and I've learned a lot from, from that group, just watching, 
the posts and seeing all all the different things. So I, I and I will say when you run into a problem, it has become a big help for people where you know, but did you die is a good example. Somebody said, I just got taken down by this. What's going on? There are very few resources where you can turn to a group of people and say, Hey, I got hit with this. What can I do? Like, Mm -hmm. and all of a sudden you've got like people around you doing the same kind of industries and doing the same kind of things. And, and all of a sudden you, you realize people have had this experience before and right. I don't want to call it a dog pile, but sometimes it is a dog pile where you can identify these bad actors, post right. it in the group, and all of a sudden you've got 150 people that are with you holding right. you up. Yep. Now, we get the person sometimes that's the bad actor that comes into the group and starts spouting off in the thread or, right. you know, yeah, there's moles in the group and all these conspiracies and the, who cares? <laughs> This just yeah. gave you a bit of a safe space to post right. it, bring out the issues and have people that will support you and say, you are correct or you're incorrect is right. our feeling. And here's how we can move forward. But to mobilize a group of people to say, no, you're not going to hit me with this stupid phrase. Right. We're not going to take these. And all of a sudden the person that's doing the takedowns is facing kind of a mad crowd of 200 or 300 people saying you right. can't do this. Right. Yes. Like and they expose they, these bad yeah. actors. Yeah. You give everybody an army, especially, especially the people who are targeted unfairly. You give them like an army of people who are like, no, fight this this is what you can do here's some things and then the thing recently that i liked was that you know the a couple attorneys who are you know that's their specialty and who can help because then the other thing is like okay you probably need to find an attorney okay well where the heck am i gonna find you know like finding one is then the next hard part of like where do Mm -hmm. i find someone in that you know, area that can help me and isn't going to charge me a million bucks and kind of, you know, it's just, it, the, we've said it a few times, the resources in there are really great because, you know, we, you're either brand new to this and you know nothing or, you know, you, you want, you want to save time because I mean, the, that's another thing that the reason these groups are, are around is, you know, sometimes you don't necessarily need to do the same thing that everyone has already done a million times, learn from someone else, mm-hmm. learn, you know, pull from other people's knowledge and save yourself some time and energy from someone who's already put that in and wants to, to help the next person. Yeah. And it's been very unique in that sense for the group, because I don't know of another group that offers this mm-hmm. kind of a, an ability to come together as people Right. And and discuss actual problems, not just discuss, oh, well, how do you file a trademark? Well, no, like I've got problems with this or problems with the copyright. And that, that's where it's kind of evolved to is, you know, there's so many needs within this industry. And I have no doubt that if we did some pushing, the group would be, you know, 50, 75, 100,000 people. Most people just don't even know it's there. And when they do, do find it, they realize what kind of a resource it is for them. So. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I appreciate, you know, that being an admin or a moderator, it's unpaid. (laughs) You know, everyone kind of thinks that like, you know, there's like, as some people think we make a lot of money and most make zero, or if they make anything, it's because, you know, affiliate links or other, some other kind of, you know, revenue. And even then, if you do do that, it's a lot of times it's not like it's, it's groups, Facebook groups aren't typically, especially um, helpful ones aren't out there like, you know, paying people's mortgage and bills and stuff. So, right. you know, a lot of well, things- and, and here, here's the other side to it. We do have a meager little Patreon that we have that, you know, maybe we should push uh, some lives or some things there, but yeah. I mean, that, that really has only gone to where, I mean, you, you get an IP attorney and you're paying four or $500 an hour for advice you know and we've had to go for advice on things like can you go through our entire group and make sure we're not going to be sued for something like right uh, we and that's been a focus of our admin team is no personal attacks and be careful what is said and you know we've had to go through from day one and go through all the posts and all the threads and delete stuff that we think might be in a personal attack because ultimately 
I've been threatened with lawsuits from people. I've been threatened oh. by lawyers. I, you know, we're going to come after you. And when it comes down to it, who are they going to come after? They're going to come after right. the admins. And right. so, you know, we have paid for some legal advice on things and, and it's nice having a, a, a younger brother that's a big wig corporate attorney. It's nice to get some right. side advice from, but, but that, you know, do we go and monetize this? Not really. I mean, we thought of maybe putting up a store and selling some shirts and people want yeah. some stickers, but, but totally ultimately sure. that, that kind of money though um, is eating up pretty quick when you're talking $500 an hour for an attorney. Right. Um, it doesn't go very far. And if you're bringing in three, four hundred, five hundred dollars in a month or eight hundred in a month on a Patreon, right? You know, that was a, that was an hour and a half for an attorney, you know. Right, exactly. That's <laughs> what I mean. It's, you're not paying anybody's mortgage, even if you are a group that's monetized. You know what I mean? Yeah. So there's probably some one offs that that are here and there, but you know, 90, 95 percent of them are either not monetized at all. And like you said, if you're not making anything from the Patreon, when, you know, when you do have to consult an attorney so that you can keep the group open, that's coming out of your pocket. So now you're not only yeah. making zero money, you're making like negative, you're actually investing into, you know, this group. So, um, again, it just makes it even more so, you know, um, just that much better well, that you still continue to offer it. And yeah, I, I highly recommend pushing that Patreon because I, I yeah, would I probably... Be I would be a, a member or, you know, I'd buy a shirt or whatever. Cause again, it's just, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's valuable in the, in the community. And, you know, I think we all want it to, to stay. So we need to, we need yeah. to keep it around. If we got to toss you a couple of dollars, I'll <laughs> toss you a couple of dollars. <laughs> well, and ultimately when you're looking at the group of this kind of a, a magnitude, it's not, how do I operate my laser? Or how do I operate my printer? Right you're dealing with a very fine line. Like we have to be careful not to say, well, here's the legal advice you can, you know, yep. we have to be careful on that. And we have to be careful because we got 35,000 members of which when you look at the activity on uh -huh. a monthly activity, we're ranging between about 25 and 29,000 active members a month. Wow. Meaning, meaning they have interacted in some way or seen something from the group, which is a pretty substantial number out of 35,000. Yeah. And most yeah. is like um, a small, it's like a quarter or maybe half. So yeah, that's, that's huge. Oh well, yeah. We're, we're consistently over like 26, 20, 27,000 active members wow. a month. That's awesome. Um, but so you as an admin team have to take responsibility for that many active members posting stuff. Right. And when I get a notification from somebody saying, you know, I'm going to sue you unless you take that post down. I, I have to do a little bit of background saying, well, maybe I need to call an attorney and get a half hour right. of advice on this one. Right. And that, that's the stuff you don't see. And you don't see yeah. the, the work by Dave and Ashley and Debbie and, you know, Brenda, I mean, popping in, they run their own businesses and families and they're right. popping in to manage this. And it's a big deal, but we feel it's important. It's not going anywhere. Um, we, we want the group to be open to more conversation than just letters of protest like it was. And I said, we've got some hardliners, but hey, we're a big happy family just trying to help people wade through this yeah. BS that's occurring in the market. I mean, me, me personally right now, I've got my own fight going on with Monster Energy. Yeah. They opposed my Monsters and Martians trademark for horror art on t-shirts oh and God. coffee mugs. And now I have to spend thousands of dollars to go through the right. process to show that their opposition is wrong. That's You know, that's what do you do? It's nice to have yeah. the, the fallback of a group like this to say, hey, give me some advice and give me some support so I can walk away with a smile on my face at the end of the day. All right. Well, and something we didn't really cover. So there's the, the trademark process. When, when again, does the letter of operate, what is it? Opposition? Oh, letter of protest. Letter of protest. Um, yes. when, when can that be filed in the, the trademark process. So there's like, okay. and then the other thing we've seen too, sorry, cause I have ADHD, <laughs> that <laughs> people will file for a trademark and then immediately start defending it. And that's not how it works either. Mm. I was surprised nope. even with my first one. I mean, my first one took over a year yeah. to 
go through the whole process and become registered. The second one was much quicker um, because I think we were further out of out of COVID. But yeah, so how does how does that work? Well, trademarks right now to be assigned to an examiner are taking eight to ten months. Okay. Yeah, just that's... to get to the examiner. Okay. Right. And then the examiner looks at it and decides whether or not it should be pushed to publication. But yes, it's taking over a year to get a trademark registration. The letter of protest can be filed anytime from the application going live being submitted, meaning it has a serial number, okay. right up until it has gone through um, publication. Now, what the publication is, is the examiner has looked at the application and has now put it out to public publication for opposition. Up until the first day of that publication, you can file a regular short letter of protest, giving the evidence, and we've got guides and things like that in the group to help you. Mm-hmm. After it goes into publication, though, you have to file a more formal letter of protest, and you have 30 days mm-hmm. before that publication for opposition is passed, and that turns into a much larger document. Like I said, with Mama Bear, it was a 75-page document. It's much more formal. It's much more harder. It's, it's harder to get through. It's harder because now you're taking the whole system and saying, hey, you made a big mistake here. You right. need to pull it out of publication and put it back to the examiner. Right. So that's the window you have. You have the window from application until publication. I see. And I didn't realize you could do it before that like 30 day window and that it was kind of too different. I, that's something oh, no, I- you, so they file and they're waiting for that examiner. Are you, like I said, you've got eight months, nine months, 10 months, 11 months to file that letter of protest. And if it gets rejected, maybe file a better one. That's got better right. evidence. Once you go to publication though, it's the long form and at publication, you got 30 days. And once that 30 days has passed and if a, a proper opposition hasn't been filed, Mm -hmm. or they pulled it out with a letter of protest, it's going to go through to registration. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's your time frame that you've got to get something done. That's why I say, don't sit on your laurels, you know, get it submitted now before it gets to the examiner, because Mm -hmm. it will go through the process and and be able to be looked at. So. Well, and then another thing that happened that I saw was kind of happening um, with the, but did you die fiasco um, was people people were like tempted to go file other frivolous <laughs> trademarks as like a way to combat mm. what she was doing. And it was like, no, that's, and then they would say things like, Oh, well, I, I won't, I won't not let anybody use it or whatever. They'd say, right. I, I won't file a takedown on you or I won't, you know, come after you. If you use it, I just want to take them down. And it's like, well, for one, If you aren't defending your trademark, you can lose it because that's part of the requirements in when getting one is that you don't just let anybody use whatever you filed for. Um, And then that's you're just doing if you do file something frivolous to go after someone like that, you're just doing exactly what they're doing. And that's not how you fight them properly. Two wrongs (laughs) don't make it right. Exactly. Yeah. Oh yeah, we've I've run into people and, and groups that have tried the whole theory of, well, let's go trademark these ourselves and then yeah. we'll let our friends use them or <laughs> you know, and I've had I've had there's a guy out of Germany that started started doing this and his thought was, well, I'm doing it for the community. Mm-hmm. I'll let everybody use it and I'm like, "Well, I don't get along with you. Are you going to let me use it?" And it, right. you, then it's kind of like, "Well, you know, you'll pick your buddies who gets to use it. Right. And, and that, and as you said, that's not how a trademark functions. And we saw that with, but did you die was, Oh, well, this is a copyright concern. Well, I'll go trademark it and then give it to everybody. And it just, we're not going down that line and we don't accept that in group because we've seen people Mm -hmm. try that. And I'm like, it's just, it's not going to work. Didn't they? Um, I think one of the members, I, I said, I think one of the members actually did go attempt to to file yeah. for it. Yeah, yeah. and uh, well, ex members, right? Yes, um, and and <laughs> no, they tried to say, problem. well, you know, I'll I'll agree to um, take down my trademark application if you agree to remove all the posts that you know no. outed me for doing this. I'm like, no, it's just not going to happen. Right, we'll fight you on the application, but or you can take it down and. 
I, I don't know. We've had uh, a lot of people been removed from group because they're, I'm going to start the new way and we're just not going to, yes, the system is broken, yes. but further breaking it doesn't fix anything. Exactly. Right. Right. We're not going to stand for that. So Yeah. Which is good. Yeah. Cause I mean, I get it. You know, you get frustrated and you, you don't know how to fight them sometimes, or, you know, you're just mad. So you're just like, Oh, I'm going to, I'm going to get them back. And it's like, okay, let's, let's get them back, but let's get them back in a way that's not going to screw things up more. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What really needs to happen in the industry is the marketplaces that we're selling on need to open their eyes to right. what's really going on, which they yeah. know what's going on. They do. But They're put doing- aside their want to make the money off of it right? and start actually participating in what's happening. Etsy I tomorrow agree. could put their foot down on some of these things yeah. and say, you know, show us a valid reason why your trademark registration on this phrase needs to take down 20,000 shirts. Right. Any lawyer that's in the IP field can look at this logically and see what's going on. They just don't want to like somebody like Amazon. It's not our problem to spend legal fees helping our community. It's your problem. And so it's, it's a real quandary what's going on and what's the answer. The answer is these platforms need to do something, but on the other side, they're not going to. So we need to do something. Yep. I agree. (laughs) <laughs> is there anything else do you have a question no no i was gonna i was gonna ask for that patreon so people could help support oh yeah for sure oh I, I think there's a link uh in the about okay. section of the group right. Right. and we've got you know two dollars a month or you know the five dollar I, I i mean i i throw my 75 bucks into the pool just to show i you know put the big amount and i have since yeah. day one but I don't know. I mean, at one time it was bringing in quite a m- bit of money. I think it was, you know, a thousand or two thousand dollars. But I mean, That's go awesome. through the group and start reviewing things, and that doesn't yep. go very far once you get a, an attorney right. looking at things. Agreed. But yeah, yeah I, you know, if they want to throw a cup of coffee at us, um, you know, it helps out the admins. Yeah. Uh, you know, just pay for the yeah that's the other thing is we will pay for some of the letters of protest that we feel affect the community Mm -hmm. in a big way we're not going to pay for everyone but if there's a big one like a mama bear it allows us to pay for those fees and you know consult an attorney or get a legal letter written or things like that so yeah yeah no that's great I think I, I'm going to sign up for my first <laughs> my first patron. We have a, a yeah. Patreon as well. Um, yep. And I mean, you know, it's it's similar. We were doing this for zero dollars for the podcast for about mm-hmm. eight to ten months. And, you know, it makes it now with our, our patron, it makes a couple hundred a month. And we usually end up paying for that. Like it probably paid for this background yep. or, you mm-hmm. know, other stuff. So it goes into it, but it just helps you know, keep the lights on. Exactly. Helps yeah. keep the light on. <laughs> yeah. yeah. In the group and otherwise. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, uh, feel free to post the group in your group and get members to come over. Um, sure. Take a I look mean, at the guides, time. ask yeah. questions. There's, there's lots of help there. So yeah, I'm recommending that group. Anytime someone has any, you know, related questions on like, go join here. This is, this is what you need in your life to <laughs> yep. to get to the bottom of what to do. So we yeah. appreciate you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Coming on the show as well. Yeah. Thank you. Thank my admin team. They, they make oh, it happen. So. Yes. <laughs> cool. Well, thank you. Um, yeah. yeah. Stick around. We're going to come back for our life update, but don't go anywhere. And we're back. Yeah. That was a lot of inf- good information. It was. It was, it was really, really good. good. Yeah. And even, I mean, as you saw, even I get confused um, right. between I mean, the two all the time. Right. right. Um, but I know enough to know, you know, either when I need to go get right. more information and where, to, or, and where to go get information. Exactly. That's, that's the big yep. thing. That's the big thing that, that this resource exists. Right. And again, it's one of those, you know, as the community grows, mm-hmm. you find where people need help and things right. like this come up. Yep. Um, and luckily it's, you know, it's free, but mm-hmm. we do encourage you to yes. join this Patreon because, you know, lawyer fees can get expensive. Right. And yeah. I mean, you can ask these questions to a lawyer at a fee. Mm-hmm. And here you, you have a group where $4 a month, right. 
two dollars. I mean, I forget yeah. what the I think his he said pay as scale. Low as two, yeah. Right. So you know, throw them a couple couple bucks a month, and mm-hmm. I mean, it's well worth it, especially sure. if you end up really having to need it, and they can file a um yeah a letter of uh protest protest. Right. I wanted <laughs> to say I wanted to say opposition because you said right, opposition, yeah. but I was like, that's it's not opposition, but then right. I couldn't find yeah letter <laughs> that of protest. Would be Lou. Yeah, yeah, letter of protest. <laughs> Yeah. Um, you know, and it's, it's just or, or you know, you can mm-hmm. you can chime in and help somebody else out right. as well. You know, yeah. so it's it's a very good um, resource to have. Yeah. In the community. At the very least, join the group. Um, yeah. And if you yeah. if you got it, send them a little yeah. bit through Patreon. Sure. Speaking of Patreon. Yeah. You can send us our, a little bit, too. Yeah. While, while you're on Patreon, <laughs> just go ahead. Speaking and, of resources, and I hope right that we're at least a resource <laughs> for some laughs. And then also right. as a bonus right. and get you some through laser knowledge yeah, and get you through the day, get you <laughs> right. through your project, yeah. you know, while you're in your Listen to us while you're, you know, painting or yeah. removing masking. Yeah. It's, it's a great it's a great way to pass time send us a couple bucks. yes yeah, send us a couple <laughs> bucks um, help help pay for the new neon right yeah <laughs> i mean look at yeah it. like i've yeah. been checking it out yeah on the screen and yeah, i'm definitely just, i'm yeah, coming I'm, I'm around liking, to it yeah I'm, I'm liking our new our new setup yeah. it's gonna be great it's great I think <laughs> um it's yeah. so quick life update yeah um, um you know uh for me it's all it's all riley black media um, getting through this marketing course, mm-hmm. um, I think. Um, well, no, this is coming out this week. We're, we're no longer a week ahead. We're a week right. off. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we will um, be. Yeah. I'm gonna so, get on it. <laughs> so, um, so for you guys listening on Monday, um, hopefully this week, I'm I'm gonna begin to, I know, send out emails. It's exciting and, though. And, and contact and schedule you know, meetings. I saw a really good comment the other day, which is what we already knew, uh-huh. but was um, how a lot of people don't reach out or reach out by like text or email where it's easy to ignore rather Mm -hmm. than calling or asking in person right because the rejection and the no's Mm -hmm. are i mean by nature uncomfortable right and someone um posted a comment on on that topic and they said rephrasing how you take those no's sure they won't maybe never necessarily not be something that you take a little personal Mm -hmm. he's like but you know rephrase it in that okay if i need five yeses and i know that four out of five people are gonna say no right that means i need to ask 20 25 people people. in order to get my five yeses right because you know that you're going to get yeah. this many right. no's. Right. And so I just thought, I mean, we already knew that because we knew like yeah. with you that yeah. you're going to have to ask a lot more people right. to get the few right. that you have as like your goal. Um, but just rephrasing how you look at it mm-hmm. and saying, you know, this, I need to ask 20 people and right. then I'll get my five. Right. And just thinking of it that way rather than, oh, I asked five people and four said no. Right. Said, Everyone. Well, yeah. One said yes. Exactly. So, that's great. And yeah. then he also said that those people that say no, he's like, he said, now you have, <coughs> now you have 16 people who you can follow up with as well. Right. Even right. though there's a no, they might right. not be they're always just a no. They're a no, they're right, a no now. right now. Exactly. Their needs might so, change. And, exactly. And and they might see, they might see something from a competitor mm-hmm. and then be like, oh, I remember so-and-so reached mm-hmm, out with right? this. Yeah. With this offer, let me see mm-hmm. if they're if still if they're available, still, right, whatever, right, or whatever. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Or, you know, because a it's lot not of times, their budget right now, now their budget changed, right. whatever. Well, yeah. a lot of times also it's like, oh, you know what? Now I'm ready to do a video, mm-hmm. you know, or, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. And I know who to reach out to. Mm-hmm. Where before it's like, you know, I would love to, if, if only I knew someone, right. or, you know, right. you know, I could ask, you know, my son's friend who i think right. does videos is different yeah. than like oh this company reached out to me yeah so it's like yeah yeah yep. so, it's already a line of communication mm-hmm. that you've opened even right. if it's a no even if it's yeah. a no right so so yeah it's just but it's still it's still nerve-wracking oh, reaching yeah. out to and then of course i'm gonna bomb my first few meetings because right. i've never yeah. done a meeting and, yeah and even though this um this strategy i mean you help, may it's not necessarily no, right yeah. i may you knock could, it out i right. may but but i'm going in thinking i'm probably okay gonna bomb Right. And it's it's fine. It's it's part right. of the growing pains because I am developing a personalized. It's still a script, mm-hmm. but it's a personalized script. That way, right. when you know you can, it, it tells you to do thirty of them mm-hmm. before you reassess your script. Right. Because that way you get familiar with it. Towards you know, in the middle of it, you it becomes almost like flawless. Because at right. first you're trying to hit all you these get more points. Comfortable with it. 
right mm-hmm. as you go through the same exact script it right. go you know and again it's tailored Practice. exactly it's <laughs> tailored for my my business because not all right. businesses are the same so um yeah but it's still yeah. again it's still to to yeah. reach out cold to you know it's easy when mm-hmm. someone comes to me and says hey can you work on this project I'm like of course i can right let's get to work yeah. there's another thing is like hey i know you weren't looking for this but i got it right you <laughs> do, do you so, want to spend right. a lot I, of money on <laughs> I, I swear yeah. it's gonna help <laughs> right i promise you it's gonna help right even though you don't see it yet right yeah so yeah. so yeah but I'm, I'm excited yeah, yeah, yeah. i'm excited and and uh can't wait yeah and can't it's wait been, so Two and a half months in yeah. the new house. Yes, yeah, two and a half. I can't. It's, Still... it, it seems, it seems like longer. It does. And I think it's because, like, I'm not traditionally working. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Right. So it feels like, oh, man. You know, you get the yeah, itch like, I'm oh. Getting, no, I'm getting like, a little like. like <laughs> ooh, how long can, you know, how long can we do this? For the first like, two months, like, I was like, we're good. Right, and then we month. hit that certain <laughs> threshold in our savings. And I was like. Ooh, okay. So All right. Start so about back, now. back, back gonna, onto it. Yeah. And then as soon as it was like back onto it, it was like, here's some back to school right. germs. Right. right <laughs> like, right. oh, okay. Right. So, so yeah. yeah. And it's trying, it's trying to apply the pressure mm-hmm. before the pressure is really applied. Right. Because like we do well under pressure. We do. But we need it to be self applied before life really applies it. Because uh-huh. then when life applies it, it might it's be like, a little too oh, late. Yeah, <laughs> right. Exactly. And exactly. now we're scrambling. Uh huh. So let's scramble. Mm-hmm. when we don't really 100 percent right need to. need to yeah yeah so yeah. so yeah it's you know i mean i'm sure everyone goes through it oh, with the yeah. uh, you know when when yeah. you take that leap and both mm-hmm. people so like you know it, it's it's easy to take leaps and right. like buy new machines and everything like that when there's right. one person who's holding down mm-hmm. the home front for the most part right you know when it's additional right it's easy to take leaps yeah. But when it's when we've all taken the leap now, uh-huh. it's and and you know it does. It's it's been great being home. Mm-hmm. Oh and my it's gosh. been it's been great spending time. You I mean, know, just with... touching a little bit on like how last year, uh, how I was struggling. I was struggling with Jr.'s right. behavior and that kind of stuff. And this last week, he had he had a rough week, mm-hmm. and I he had a really bad you know breakdown and and you you yeah. know we're in his room you know dealing with him and and trying to trying to come you know bring him back down and stuff and i was really anxious because of like you know the build up to it and mm-hmm. like i could still hear all of it going on right. from his room but i was also so relieved in the same sense that you know when that used to happen last year Mm -hmm. it was just me right and it was you know he was screaming carrying on Mm -hmm. and i'm like oh please don't wake up jackson worried about if he wakes up jackson now i have which one am i going to tend to what you know what do i do then and like you know texting you or calling you hoping that you actually can help me and that you're not about to be on a live shot or you're not about to interview somebody and you know i i I wasn't alone but like i was you know and it was so nice to to have you there for yeah. those moments. And that's what I, I really needed. And that's kind of why like our first few goals, like, sure, we'd love to have DJ Khaled money, you know, yeah. as, as we joke yeah. about or what, like we'd yeah. love to have that kind of money. Yeah. But at the same time, our first goal is to have enough just to cover our bills. Yeah. Like yeah, it, just it, to live comfortably, just so that we can spend more time with the mm-hmm. boys. We can have dinner as a family every single night, right. and we sit at the table together. We go on family walks if mm-hmm. we can, if the weather allows right. or the sicknesses allow. Right. And you know, to have those luxuries to be able to do that, to be able to go to Colorado, mm-hmm. you know, whenever we can afford it, right. or whenever we want to, or you know, around their school schedules. Of right. course, that's really the only schedule we kind of have to play around for the most right, part. Right, because everything else we can control. Right. And it's just it's that's it's not all about the monetary values of of being self employed. No. It's mostly about the non monetary right. values. Right. It's about and to then, be able to, being able to enjoy your life. Exactly. Is, yeah. is what it is. We're well, only, I mean, we've seen how short all, it is. We're only here. That's what I would say. We're only here for X amount. No one knows right. how long they're here for. Right. So the only, you know, you gotta, you gotta enjoy, you know, it all yep. as, as you can. Exactly. And, you know, you work yourself to death mm-hmm. to, for just that. Right. You know, and if you're going to work yourself to death, at least do it for yourself. Yep. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> if you can, you know yeah, what I mean? Can, cause, yeah. It's, Cause I understand. It's not it's not in, and I understand it's not within anybody's means and right. what made this possible was the you know basically our our 
a house at the time that gave us the luxury of selling it for a profit, mm -hmm. yeah. buying a new one where yeah. <coughs> oh, I will cost of living was a little oh, bit lower. I will say, seeing all the all the reels and the memes uh -huh. of like how now mm -hmm. isn't in time to like uh -huh. like like everybody enjoying their two percent, three percent mm -hmm. interest rate and this and that. I'm like, listen, we got rid of our three percent interest. We just got rid of that. Yeah, I know. But look at but, it. I mean, it no, still no, was a yeah, financial was, and life. It put us. It put us in a better. In a better yeah, spot. it put us in a better spot and, for sure. And hopefully, I, I can make some dollars to keep, keep right our spot. Yes, comfortable. But I agree. But no, it's been it's been great. Yeah. Um, can't wait to see you know what we do. So yeah, feel free to uh, join Patreon mm -hmm. and and throw, help us out. <laughs> throw some dollars our way if you're enjoying content. Yeah. and um, also like and subscribe on YouTube. <laughs> um, those those watch hours are are mm -hmm. going up um, as yep. well. Um, as as well as the subscribers. Mm -hmm. I mean, we we've gotten a few and yeah, we've, we've stopped pushing. Good. Yeah, because we already reached <clears throat> that threshold because YouTube yeah. helped us out. On that with lowering the um oh right the, the subscribers the on subscriber. youtube yep. yeah um but no it's been it's been great loving yeah. the new the new um yeah backdrop i'm glad we finally completed it yeah <laughs> you know in my head when we moved it was like oh you're gonna be working you know start of august i mean i i, I knew it would kind of be back to school time before we'd really right. get to like get to, pull it off but mm -hmm. i thought you'd be doing some like soft launching before that right and then i also thought this was going to be up within you know well, i don't that, know so that was the plan but then the daycare wrench came right. in and we didn't have that and it's like yeah well can i well and know, just life and, and, and reality yeah. and yeah. So, you know yeah. i'm and always honestly, and honestly it's only been two and a half months right but it's been two and a half months right well but then again <laughs> in my mind i'm like oh how long can, will it take to to get that workshop set up and like yeah. we did get it set up pretty quickly, pretty quickly but it's yeah. still not finished no. and like you know you always it's think functional you and that's what it's, happens it is functional when it's functional you kind of stop but we didn't we did keep, it again last week we did a little going. bit right so well we're gonna have to do, do the rest of yesterday. we're gonna have to do this by next week as well that's true then see that's what we need we need like four the pressure deadlines. we need the pressure is what we need when <laughs> so there's no bad. pressure to do stuff Ugh. we just kind of sit and I'm, I'm sure the same for a lot of people yeah but um yeah we need the pressure because they're coming in to uh, install put, the yeah basically a way for us to vent the machine without yeah. having to cut a hole inside that inside of the house yeah so yeah we changed the panels on the garage doors to yeah. have some windows mm -hmm. um but we need to get all that crap out, out of, of the, the way out of the way because we kind of pushed <laughs> Since we don't open the garage because right. of the AC and everything, right. we kind of just pushed everything towards the door, mm -hmm. and that's where they need access. Exactly. So we need to push all that back. Yeah, but I mean, it'll um, it'll push but it'll us to push us make to, it a priority, right? And then mm -hmm. once it's in, this stuff hopefully won't go back because we'll right. find a place for it. Yeah, yeah. So I think that's all we got, though. So that's all we got. Just wish um, us luck. Yeah, I hope you guys are enjoying our content that we're yeah. putting out there. And um, if you if you uh, have any need for video editing some tips and stuff reach out to us yeah um riley black media uh yeah riley black media at gmail.com yeah. um not all because I'm, I'm mostly active on instagram, instagram and Facebook, so but, riley black media on instagram send me a dm if if you want to just price stuff out or yeah need anything it's 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 more um i'm focusing now more on tailoring packages towards people so it's not like a one right fits one size, all one yeah. size fits all because the yeah the pricing we initially came mm -hmm. up with just isn't working for the the new path right. um and i mean yeah it's, it it isn't one size fits all because not no. everybody needs the same thing right someone may want just a little bit of help here mm -hmm. or one video or right. one off things or some people may right. need you and, on a recurring basis right so. and, and and some just don't really they know that they want a presence, but they don't know what they need. Right. So, yeah. so yeah, if you're, if you're in that, if you're in that state, we can, we can set up a virtual meeting and we can talk about, you know, different packages and see where your budget is and what, you know, what we can do. Yeah. Yeah. This has been another great episode of the Riley Back Project. <laughs> Chris and John. Bye. Maybe we're all done. <laughs>